Hey there. How you doing? Welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel, and we kind of sound like old Greg on this episode of Jake and Joel. The like, an old, like an old scaly manfish <laughs> for a throwback. We are continuing our Pioneer Sleeper series with the next set after battle for zindikar which i mean joel is... could we could we actually call it at this point a descent into madness yeah it might be we are digging deep into the pioneers set to find all the sets to find the sleeper picks that are between one and five dollars right now that we think have the chance to go up even if it's a small weight even if it's a sideboard staple real quick before we jump into the cards if you wouldn't mind hitting like hit and subscribe down there it really helps us out just push some buttons if you're logged in. Don't be lazy. If you're not logged in, though, sit back, relax, and let's get into the cards. Jake, we talked about in our Battle for Zendikar set Pioneer Sleepers video that lands are going to be safe. This is a this is a format where mana confluence is as good as you're going to do. So the dual lands that are playable will probably see play. Yeah, for sure. And uh, these are the first first targets that yep. people are going towards if you weren't there with the insider information and you were buying the smugglers copters and death rate shamans and jace friends prodigies and all of those shenanigans a week in advance right because you had privileged information you are now buying these kind of cards at yep. a uh, at a reasonable price and i will say they're starting to get uh bought out uh if you go on card kingdom or you go to tcg you're going to start to see the the dollar 79 copies of needle spires those are starting to evaporate hissing quagmire wandering fumarol all of them they're just they're just going away everybody's just covering their bases right now we have a mad sprint right a mad dash where everybody's taking expendable income they're throwing it into penny stocks that they think could go up and uh and now here we are we have pioneer trying to to figure out its footing and uh and that's that's where it is for the most part um pretty much any format the land bases the mana bases are going to be the most expensive entrance barrier for for playing the format at all for any deck because you know it's not specific strategies there's only five colors and you need the lands of the colors that you need so this is it's the reason time. fetch lands are banned exactly it's if the fetch lands were reason. banned all of the cons fetches would be skyrocketing they would all be going to like 40 50 right. 60 dollars for polluted delta it would be just a madhouse everybody would be upset wizards was right to ban them it's going to promote a new diverse meta so it's it's very exciting times so Bottom line is lands equal good. After that, matter reshaper. Three costs for a 3-2 when it dies. Reveal the top card of your library. If it's a three converted mana cost permanent, right onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. Jake, card advantage is good. Am I right? Card advantage is good. Yep. Uh, need we say more? If there's a Eldrazi um, tribal that takes off, there is a 100,000% chance that this card will be in the deck. There's right. no way that it would be left out. That is the three cost drop for that deck. This is a sideboard wipe option for that deck, especially if it happens to be running any seven cost or greater Eldrazi. Kozilek's Return, two to each creature. The first time you play it, five to each creature if you cast a big Eldrazi and exile it from your graveyard. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Absolutely. That's pretty much all that needs to be said. Goblin Dark Dwellers. This is a card as a burn player that I really like because it gives you something to do later on the curve where normally for a mono red deck, I would omit cards that were five or more. I would really only have maybe a four of, of a four cop cost or more. But this gives me avoidance, a good solid butt to avoid lightning strikes, five converted mana cost to cast a free three or less instant or sorcery when it enters the battlefield i mean it's it's got a lot going for it even though it's five cost yep that's exactly why it's on the list the menace is great the the four four is is fine but it really is all about getting that that card back from the yard I see this playing really well in a green red beats or something that that you're going to get like a nice little pump spell back something like that or a, a good removal spell maybe a lightning strike to the face yeah. you never know but it's a really good card there's ways to ramp into it you can get it out as early as like turn three so i think goblin dark dwellers is is definitely something to have on your list and it's like 79 cents yeah it's so cheap right now it's so cheap to buy into it world breaker comes out after that talking about seven cost eldrazi 
5-7 when it enters the battlefield. No, sorry, when you cast it. We're in a new realm here. It's a cast trigger. Exile, an artifact, enchantment, or land. It comes with reach, and you can sacrifice it, uh, a land on the battlefield to return it from your graveyard to your hand. This is a hell of a mythic rare. Yeah, it's really good, and I mean, it's a Tron card. Uh, so it's a deck that Tron adopted. It's it's performed well in Tron. It's good versatility, which is why it's here. And again, there's so many Eldrazi, and we don't know what's going to happen in future sets right. of Pioneer. We don't know. We're about to return to Zendikar. Yeah. So to think that Eldrazi aren't going to be a big a, a big thing in Zendikar is, I mean, it's yeah, just it's, it's, it's one just of the shenanigans. Seats of the entire set. The only time right. we didn't really majorly deal with Eldrazi was the first time around and really only for one set. After that, they were Awakening and, and we were in an Eldrazi world. Eldrazi Displacer is another one that is going to be a three drop in that kind of deck because it's got a flicker ability built in. Yep, it's it's an excellent card. Again, you know, can't, can't bang the, we're about to be in a new Eldrazi set drum enough. It's, right. it's just, it's an important card. It, Eldrazi Displacer is played in modern Eldrazi and so it's it's just it's notable because it's cheap and also right now there are a lot of cards that are spiking and the hive mind is in a specific place mm -hmm. uh, the hive mind is in a specific set of cards and it's cards that are historically good but overlooking cards like this that are just like clear value for three right. three mana that are still hanging out at like 79 cents to a dollar to honestly as things start to spike anything that looks notable in like the three to five dollar range if it's something that you think you want to play, it's worth it to get it now. I'm not saying go out. We're not saying go out and spend all of your money on magic cards. You know what your budget is. Absolutely. Is we just want is. to show you options that are super cheap right now that if you are interested, you may want to pick up. Oath of Nyssa, I remember around War of the Spark that this was a huge spec for some people and it bombed like crazy. And you have been you have been given a second Redeem. second I've chance at life with Oath of Nyssa. <laughs> Dude, I have another window that's been created where right. I have a bunch of Oath of Nyssa, and I'm like, I can cash in now and get out probably ahead for all of the Oath of Nyssas, but I, I still think the card is excellent. All you have to do if you've already played it is play another one. It replaces itself. It does the exact same thing. Right. It's just something that digs, and, and we always talk about a Jake and Jeweler Magic. We always talk about velocity. What can you do to get through your deck? Because normally the person with more cards in hand, more answers, is going to be the person that wins. Yep, absolutely. This card enables more Planeswalkers to be included of different colors if you so choose. Uh, you know, you don't just want to rely on your goose or your 2-1 um, hexproof added man of any color kind of cards to make sure that you can cast your Planeswalkers on time for their correct converted mana costs. Oath of Nyssa helps fix that kind of thing. And we know we're going to see a Super Friends deck before too long. Jory in. I really like this pick because we just had a set come out that whenever you cast your second spell, whenever you draw your second card, you're yes, going to get that kind of value trigger. That's why this card is on the list. Right. This plays well, so well with uh, all the cards in our drain that let you do that ability. Yeah, I like this right alongside Iron Crag Pyromancer. Right. Because all you have to do with this card is cast things. And with Iron Crag, you specifically have to draw cards. Correct. So it's built in redundancy. So in like a blue red deck, this and Iron Crag are your perfect turn threes. Absolutely. You want one You've or the other. You've got creatures that get plus one, plus one counters on them for their second draw. You also have cards uh, like Unlikely Alliance, I think is it's called. For your second draw, you get a 1-1 Fairy, and it also enables another draw strategy stagnantly on the enchantment. So, yeah, I saw this card and went, yep, Jake's head's in the right place, because this plays with Eldraine cards very well. Yeah, dude, and I appreciate you saying that. I, uh, it's another card that's like 79 cents, and, and it's just hanging out. It's just hanging out. It is legendary, and so you know sure. that, yep. that may be a factor into how many are included in your deck, but I still think that the synergy exists and it could be played. Last up, our boy, Reflector Mage. Uncommon. Gone but not forgotten. Yeah, the card is, uh, I think when Pioneer was spoiled, I bought 20 of these at 79 cents and it's already gone up to about $1.50. And I just knew, I was like, well, 
Pioneer's going to be blown wide open. This yep. card was banned in Standard because it was such a feels bad card. It gets played in Modern Humans, so we know that it, it has the support to be good in an Eternal format. Right. And it's just a huge tempo play. It's non-legendary. It's it's really, really annoying. It's one of those cards that when you see it, you go, ah. Yeah. Like, it's very obnoxious to see. Come on. And yeah. I, I think that one of the points you made there of it's it's going up. It's been banned before. It might get banned again. There's a big pool of cards that right now are growing in price but will plummet again if and when they get banned. We'll have another video in the future on when is the right time to sell. But you're going to want to with cards like Reflector Mage that have been banned, Aetherworks Marvel, these kinds of cards. You're going to want to watch when that BNR comes out next. You're going to want to watch to see when they say we're going to have a Pioneer BNR next week. We're going to have a Pioneer BNR three weeks from now after this tournament. You're going to want to get out uh, any kind of master set that gets that gets announced and confirmed. You're going to want to get out at the right time on these cards to make sure that you don't lose value. For sure, because if, if something like Sahili and Felidar Cat... You know, a lot of people are tinkering with that right now because it's fun. It's right. a it's a win con. It just wins if you can resolve it. And that's going to be the first thing that Wizards looks at. If the format starts to fail or if people aren't having interest, this is this is going to be a a quickly pruned, heavily monitored oh, like yeah. if it is, if it is on their radar to begin with, like I'm sure Sahili Cat is on the radar. Absolutely. And then it starts overperforming, it's just going to get the axe because they don't want people to be turned off. Well, Wizard Staff have actually tweeted, I uh, read a tweet from somebody, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a Wizard Staff, and they said that, you know, we have a hot list already, and chances are if it's been banned before, it's already on the hot list. You know what I'm saying? And yep. so you got to you gotta watch out for stuff like that. That brings us back around to the lands into the end of this edition of Pioneer Sleepers. If you like the video, we really appreciate it if you hit like and subscribe. If you're logged in, that would really help us out. If you want to support us further, we've got a Patreon. The link is down in the description below. We stream twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday nights over on Twitch, playing a variety of things. I think that's all I've got. Jake, what else? I had all the notes here, but it looks like you, you got it covered. I covered it all. All right, then. I'm tapped yeah. out. We'll catch you, you next time. Covered like hash browns.